on this Wednesday evening, we welcome you into Houston, Texas. Just down the road from the University of Houston campus, we find ourselves on the campus of Texas Southern as the home of the Cougars currently under renovation for next season. The Cougars and Tigers meet for a first time this year here in conference play. Long time foes as the Cougars and Tigers each with different expectations coming into this year. Tigers thought they might be a top three team. Cougars were picked by the league to finish in the bottom three, but they have flipped those expectations. Cougars looking to win four straight here in conference play. Still in the hunt for that number two seed where there should be a great battle here in the month of February. Tigers back half of their schedule now after playing UConn twice and USF already should be a bit more manageable for them to put some wins together. On that note, we welcome you in here on the American Digital Network. Lincoln Rose along with Coach Angela Beck. We talk about two teams, different expectations at the start of the season, colliding here today. The Cougars trying to win four straight. The Tigers trying to get back on that winning track. Yeah, Memphis is going to have to slow it down, get a half-court game going, take care of the basketball and rebound it. And then, obviously, Houston's going to run and gun and shoot the three and try to steal as many times as they can. Let's take a look at some of your keys for the visitors out of Memphis. Well, they're going to have to handle the pressure of, of Houston and get back in defensive transition because one thing that they do after they steal the ball, they like to lay it up. And meanwhile, for Houston, how do they get that first four-game winning streak in conference play since joining the American? Well, they, they attack the basket in every way that they can. And then they need to limit their turnovers. They've been getting a little bit sloppy on the offensive end, and they need to slow down a little bit and limit their turnovers. Let's take a look at some of the players we will keep a particular eye on. And, of course, for Taylor Barnes, the 16-point performance against UCF coming up just short in that outing, uh, but a special talent. Well, she is, and she's starting to press her offense more. She's actually their big leader. They look for her to, to run the offense, and she's stepping her game up right now. And, of course, for Coach Huey and the Cougars, a constant all year long. Jasmine Harris now not just one of your top scorers for ball game in conference play, but also in the country. Well, she's rewriting the, the record book. She's only a sophomore. And she's saying, hey, conference, look at me because I, I feel like I'm a number one selection. I'm scoring 20 points a game. I'm, I'm in the top in steals and assists. So she, she is a talented player. When we come back to Houston, it's American Hoops on display on this Wednesday evening in H-Town. In a city known for doing things our way, there's a university that's driven to do the same, to blur the outdated line between academic pursuits and active ones, not just to learn, but to experience, to create, solve, build, to explore and express, to lead. Because an education isn't something you get, it's something you do. Well, the fans knew how to get here. Of course, they have grown accustomed to making the couple extra block trip over to the campus of Texas Southern here at H&PE Arena. Take a look at your starting lineup and for the Tigers with just seven active players, uh, Melissa McFerrin will tend to rotate some of her starters. Jada Stinson, the freshman out of Kentucky, will get her eighth career start in at guard. And of course, uh, all conference players, Elmore and Creighton, have yet to miss a start this year. Taylor Barnes, that point guard, has made all 23 starts this year as well for the Tigers. Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck with you. And for the first time today, we get to check in courtside with Megan Trammell. Megan? Well, guys, I got to catch up with the assistant coaches of Memphis before the game, and they said in order for them to win, they have to work on that transition defense and make sure to stop the three game. On the opposite side of the court, Ronald Hughley, head coach of Houston, said his team just has to get out of the comparison trap. When they get in their tempo, that's when the game will go their way. Guys? All right, thank you very much, Megan, as uh, the Cougars coming off victories now over SMU, Tulane, and we saw them the other night up in Wichita, Kansas against the newcomers, Shockers. Quality wins for Houston this year. A confident group as they'll win the opening tip.
Again, the old Hoffines Arena is under renovation. And I know Coach Huey and the Cougars, after getting that brand new practice facility a year ago, and all the benefits that that provides, are excited also about a new game day experience that will include some restaurants and some other fan-friendly attractions. Three-pointer in and out won't fall that time for Dorian Branch as the Tigers still with a chance to strike first here early on. Three offensive rebounds on that set, so not what Melissa was looking for to start the game. Slamming on the brakes, but unable to keep that pivot foot down against Stinson, the freshman. Tigers wearing their pink uniforms tonight. We'll hear from Megan a little bit later on this evening. Special meaning for this group. Obviously, uh, schools around the country embracing Breast Cancer Awareness Month as being the month of February. Open look. And ultimately, the Cougars cannot make them pay for leaving Hawkins wide open. We talked a little bit about the three, and he just wants them to rock and fire that tonight. You could say they live and die by it, and they've been doing a lot more living than dying by that three-pointer and a walk on Hawkins trying to get the advantage. Melissa McFerrin, a former point guard in her own right, looks like she could still D up some people. Uh, you see Ronald Huey, who she'll be matching minds with, head coach of the Cougars. And this is easily his best season since taking over this program, has his players in place. After a 12-win campaign a year ago, has already surpassed that with 17 wins this year. Their 7-3 and three mark in conference is the best start they've ever had since joining the American. Yeah, they made a decision here. Uh, they're not going to allow these guys to run their offense. One thing Melissa McFerrin does a great job of is running a bunch of sets. Coach Huey doesn't want to see those sets. He doesn't want to make them feel comfortable. So they're going to be trapping them tonight anytime they can, just like that. Which of these head coaches has the better defensive posture? Defensive posture? Oh, let me, well, that, that is yet to be seen uh, because we have to kind of look a little longer. We can't give it to them in the first play. Here's Melissa McFerrin now in her 10th year at the helm, helm of Memphis. Mentioned former point guard for Missouri. 14th year overall as a head coach. Helped lead American to the WNIT when she was the Patriot League Coach of the Year. Also former WNBA general manager for the Washington Mystics. And nice job going up to get the rebound by Elena Davis, the freshman out of Augusta, Georgia. Other way, and nice transition bucket has the Tigers out ahead. Good transition, good good rebound by Elena Davis. She's She's got great hands, and they're looking forward to her really coming into the offense. It was Cheyenne Creighton who got that layup, the Canadian third-team all-conference last year. One of two all-conference nods for returning players, Bria Elmore the other. And this is something the Tigers cannot mm. afford with only seven available players to them. This is Taylor Barnes, your point guard. And while this is what we're alluding to, as they are already this year for the rest of the season without Br Bria Wilder Cochran, a fifth year senior, Vanessa Dixon, Asia Jones, Dominique Miller, and a Due to NCAA transfer rules, they knew they were going to be without Jones there. So Memphis had coming into today, including Barnes, seven players available to them. There's a chance this last Sunday at your Super Bowl party, there were more people crowded into a living room than Coach McFerrin has available to her tonight. Well, let's just hope that she's okay. I'm not sure what happened on that play. Don't know if we caught that or not. Looks like they're looking at her knee, which is not a good sign. She was limping pretty bad, so that's not a good sign for Memphis here early. Barnes giving them nine points, three rebounds, three assists per contest. Has not missed a start this year. She one of your two Memphis natives for the Tigers, who are up by two right now. And you're already without Wilder Cochran, who's another point guard for you. See how this affects how the Tigers can handle the ball. As stripped away, the steal from Harris. Up ahead to Angela Harris. And just a little careless with the pass. Elmore the steal, late dish, and Elmore helps lead the Tigers to a 4-0 advantage. Nice distribution there, and she finds Dixon. Well, Elmore, if she doesn't come to play, there's not going to be a chance. And she, she, she looks like she's really coming to play and very athletic on that. 
Tigers, despite those four turnovers already here in the opening three-plus minutes, lead 4-0. They're going with a three-post offense and defense, and she's running a lot of junk on this end. Some, you know, triangles, some three fronts, some dig down. So they, they're not going to be able to guess what she's doing. Shot still not falling for the Cougars, and Dorian Branch, who's 0 for 2 from beyond the arc. Yeah, there's a big difference between what Melissa McFerrin would like to run and knows how to run and what she's having to adjust with here in the midst of conference play. Well, I think the great thing is that they do have a little trouble, Houston, guarding the interior of a team. And so now she's going with the triple post. So they're going to have to try to keep the ball out of the middle, and they don't have the size to do that. With all that said, when Memphis is on defense, there aren't many looks Houston can can give them that they aren't already familiar with. Uh, for the Tigers, ideally, it would be like looking in a mirror if they had all their personnel. They'd like to run a similar offense as the Cougars. Yes, they would. That's what that's what she's done in the past, and you know they were one of the top teams in the league last year. Uh, so uh, she knows how to coach. It's just been an unfortunate situation, but this is a great start for them. I'm sure she's thrilled now. They just want to probably stop the game and go home. Elena Davis, the freshman, hitting the back end of the free throws. Now 21 of 30 on the year from the charity strike. You know, Harris, as a point guard, is trying to read kind of what they're running, and, and it really takes a little bit away from their offense. But there we go. We pull the trigger in the corner with uh, Jasmine Harris. They did a great job finding the open shooter, and of all people, it was Jasmine and Harris more than happy to pull the trigger, a 35% shooter from beyond the arc. Well, they said their ability to stop the three ball for, for Houston's three ball, obviously they're one of the great three-point shooting teams in the league, but they're also the number one defensive team in the league for three-pointers, so they're going to have a hard time, Memphis, of shooting their threes against Houston. Cougars found their first three points on their last trip down. Shot clock at 14. Pass inside. Hawkins will kick it out. Cougars still haven't found the open look they want, and they'll have six seconds to go when they pull the trigger on this inbounds pass. Whenever you make Houston take 10, 11 passes like that, you, you've, uh, you've done a great job because they want to they score quickly and often. Well, Memphis, this is a good sign, is going to reinsert Taylor Barnes. After going down, hopped on the bike and uh, indicated she was good to go, quickly sat back down next to the coaching staff. And she's back on here in this ballgame. A little floater finally falls through, and just like that, the Cougars made enough stops. They had a chance to pull even now. Well, I am impressed with Harris there, Angela Harris. She, you know, does a little floater in the lane. She's a really smart player, and she does a lot for them offensively. The Cougars do not give you any free passing lanes. And that was Harris that poked it out. So early on, midway through the opening quarter, a tie ball game. Five points apiece here in Houston. You're watching American Women's Basketball on ADN. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Miss the chance to see your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Mohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. Back inside H&PE Arena, where the Houston Cougars calling this court home. Thanks to the partnership with Texas Southern University. Let's check back in with Megan Courtside. 
Kids, I got to catch up with Coach Healy before the game, and I asked him what the leadership was like on his team, and he said, you know, we really haven't found our leadership yet, but one thing they're doing is during practice, he's assigning a different captain to every practice so they can work on their leadership skills. He said that's something that he got at Toledo, and it's working great for his squad. Thanks, guys. Uh, thank you very much, Megan. We take a look at Houston as a result of whatever Coach Huey is doing. It's working right there, one game back of USF and UCF for a number two seed potentially. Of course, the top four seeds, even if they were to stay right where they are, get the first day off up in Connecticut each year in the conference tournament now that all 12 teams, when you include the addition of Wichita State, have uh, made this a complete conference and we will see how Houston's able to fare. We mentioned they've won three in a row, looking to win four in a row. First time they would have done that in conference play since 2010-2011. Both the Cougars and the Tigers, of course, back then were in Conference USA. Cougars would go on to win 17 straight that year, leading them into the conference tournament. As the Cougars would make it to the NCAA tournament, meet up with West Virginia. I think as a coach, if I was Huey, you know, his first year he's 1-17. I might get a little worried. Second year he goes two and sixteen. I might get a little worried. Next year he goes four and twelve. But then he does this, and so he, it took him a while to kind of get his groove on with his kids coming in. But he's got it now, and he likes what he's doing. And against an offense like this, he's running a man. He runs a man against a zone, and he runs a man against a man. So it's interesting concept there. Houston already has seven conference wins this year that matches the total number of conference wins they had the last three years. And they are not content with a 7-3 and three start in conference play. They had a couple of close overtime games slip away. They could easily be just a one-loss team in this league right behind UConn. Well, you know, you always talk about the fifth gear, but he says they have six gears and that he wants them to kind of unleash the beast Great passing, and Memphis, by the way, still has not missed a shot. They are three for three. What has held them back has been six turnovers early on. I'd say right now Houston's in Memphis's tempo, so good for Memphis because they've slowed them down a little bit. They're having to think and run their offense, and that's what Harris has to do, and it's taken them a while to score here. Trying to get that baseline access turnover this time by the Cougars, stolen by Stinson. Fires in the pass, little power dribble, and there's your first miss. Creighton had good positioning, just could not get it to go through. Well, neither of these teams are great rebounding teams. So, you know, it's kind of up in the air there. Who's going to get the most rebounds here? Maya West brought that ball back down around her hip when it was tied up. The junior college transfer will head back over to the bench. Coach McFerrin said, you know, they can't score 75 points, so they want to keep this game nice and slow. A rebound winds up with Elena Davis. Again, the 6'2 freshman out of Augusta, Georgia, who's giving them about three and a half rebounds a night in her 14-plus minutes per ball game. Coach McFerrin was really pleased. She said this is about the time of year that the game is really starting to slow down for her, that fast college speed starting to uh, make a lot of sense. A lot of things are clicking for her. Yeah, it usually just takes a while, but, you know, now that they get more minutes because they have more opportunities, you got to take advantage of them. Angela Harris directing traffic. Cougars still playing from behind. Talked about Angela Harris's performance in the last game. She missed a lot of shots, and, she, and the coach said she might, she's overthinking a little bit too much because she's running this offense. Yeah, that one ultimately off the mark for the Tigers from Bria Elmore. Yeah, Harris one for eight, including one of six from beyond the arc in Wichita this past weekend. Happened to be our game right here on the American Digital Network. They need to get back to running their sets. That's what they do best. And Memphis again will grow its advantage, a four-point lead once more. Uh, that was Creighton with the uh, left-hand drive and score. I mean, she's the ultimate workhorse for this team, and she is the MVP right here. She and Bria score. Elmore each averaging just about 15 points a ball game. As this ball winds up with Elmore, the senior. And the Cougars 
Nice job saving it back in to Jasmine Harris. And let's see if the Houston Cougars start to find their rhythm. Octavia Barnes able to sink that one. Yeah, I think that time um, Coach McFerrin wanted them to slow down. They started getting them in a little bit of a running game, so they need to take their time. The Memphis team, fortunately for Coach McFerrin, the freshmen have shown maturity even sooner than she would usually expect from first-year players. Obviously, they've been thrown into the proverbial fire. As that one just won't fall for one of the freshmen, Stinson. And you'll also see some of that from the Cougars. Trying to do a little too much. And we talked a little bit about that in the pregame that, you know, he thinks that they're getting a little sloppy. And uh, th that's the drive by Creighton there with the left hand uh, hook shot there. But yeah, they, they just get a little sloppy because it comes to them pretty easily. And they, you know, he knows that they can get it back or they think they can get it back, but he doesn't like that kind of play. I asked Ronald Huey this weekend, how did you know that this was going to be a different year than the past few? And he pointed to that second game of the season that the preseason WNIT against Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And he talked about how they were trailing at halftime, and he looked at every single player and asked, are you doing everything you can? They looked to each other. They came out the second half, and they went from a double-digit deficit to a 15-point victory. And they have been on a roll essentially ever since. Final half minute of this opening quarter. And it's been Memphis in the driver's seat much of the way. Yeah, they've done everything I think that Coach McFerrin wanted them to do, which is slow it down, control the boards. They've been rebounding, giving them one and done. And then they've been pounding in the post, and they've been getting that kind of look all quarter. Just can't stretch the lead. Cougars could hold for the final shot instead. That's a couple of footsteps and an offensive foul just out of control. Well, that was good defense that time. Jasmine James got, got in her way and got the charge. So 5.5 seconds remaining here for Memphis in the opening quarter. Only thing that concerns me is Memphis looks a little winded at this point. Yeah, that certainly is understandable. Opportunity for a quality look as time expires. The shot just won't fall. And we have a four-point ball game after one period of play. Tigers and Cougars squaring off here early February. Still a month removed from the madness of the conference tournament. Now the Tigers on the road with just seven players available lead the majority of the opening quarter. Is the chance to see your team cut down the nets at the American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship. All the excitement of tournament basketball starts March 8th and runs to the 11th at the Amway Center in Orlando. For tickets, call the Amway Center box office or visit theamerican.org for more information. Potentially Shrek and Thaw's over to first in time double play and that ends the game. All those Tigers on the road tonight here in Houston up by four. In fact, Houston never had a lead over Memphis in this ballgame. We were briefly tied at five apiece. Well, again, a lot of basketball still to be played here in the month of February, and we'll be right there with you for the ride here on the American Digital Network. Next up, we'll see the Knights and the Owls up there in the backyard of the new world champions, the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, enjoying their past Sunday. 
as uh, SMU will then make its way over to Tampa, Tulsa at Cincinnati. UCF then will make an appearance in a couple of matches near the end of February on the road against these Memphis Tigers for a midweek clash and then against these Cougars as well right back here in Houston. Well, what Memphis wanted to do was take away the three ball. They did a pretty good job. Houston went one of six, and they wanted to take away dribble penetration, and I didn't see much of Houston's dribble penetration in that first quarter. It's a Houston team that shot just three of 14. There you see the percentages. These two teams combined for 15 turnovers, just combined for 26 shots. Memphis at least was able to shore it up. There was a while there, they had six turnovers and just two shots. They improved things, while Houston coughed it up a few more times. That yeah, was a legal back screen by Barnes. They're running a little UCLA high post pick and uh, just got caught uh, moving. This defense has really stopped Houston from the dribble penetration. And Cougars coming off of an 11 point win at Wichita State. And it shots like that. That'll help get them back into the ball game. Angela Harris. That was good inside out action. They got it inside the middle of the zone and kicked it at the top of the key for Harris. Cougars still looking for their first lead here at home today. And they'll get an offensive foul on Jasmine James. Well, Davis. Lowered her shoulder, and uh, that was a good acting job by, by in Houston, but, you know, good for them. James, one of the two Canadians on this Memphis roster this year, out of Ontario. But she actually played her juco ball right here in Texas at San Jacinto Junior College. Long three, good. Back-to-back -back triples for Harris. She said, why not? I just hit it that time. Now she's going to get heated up. She's a great three-point shooter. Didn't have a very good game last time, so I think she's looking to really score. Cougars have their first lead of the night. They're diligently trying to run a quarter-court offense, but Houston's doing a good job of jumping these screens. Ron Huey will go to his bench, bring back in Dorian Branch, the Dallas native. Branch this year, one of their players averaging double figures, four Cougars in double figures in that victory over the Shockers on Saturday. Looking to continue this three-point parade. That one won't fall for Jasmine Harris. The Tigers now the other way. Memphis 0 for 3 from beyond the arc. A lot of their damage being done in the paint. A high dribble that happened to come back to her and then shot blocked by Harris. It'll stay with Memphis. Coach Huey says that Harris thinks she's a, a post player. She wants to be down there <laughs> with the post. She wants to, she wants to guard a post. She doesn't want to guard a guard. The 5'8 sophomore. She's down there guarding the post. Well, she was. You hold that ball long enough, you're going to attract some Cougars. And Houston gets it back. They swarmed that ball. Well, their, their whole theory on defense is ball pressure. Heckling, you know, just getting after the ball. Hands, 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 and hands. And uh, that's what they do. So you've got to move that basketball against them. They started to figure out here, I'll, I'll give Coach Huey a little credit here, that they made an adjustment. They brought in a high post, and that high post has been picking that middle of that zone apart. Right there. That's to match up with the size of Jasmine James at 6-1. And ultimately the rebound by Elmore. Trying to tie this one back up at a baker's dozen. And that's right where we are, level. That's a nice, gutsy little take right there with three defenders back. Elmore, who, if she continues to score the way she has, uh, may very well reach the 1,000-point mark before her senior year wraps up. 1,000 points for her career. 
She's already seen her teammate Creighton do that. And Ron Huey, a great recruiter, very passionate about keeping the top talent from the Houston area in Houston. And he is confident now with all of the facilities uh, starting next year that they'll be able to boast. It'll be easier and easier to do so. Well, obviously, the success on the court as well doesn't hurt. Tigers find the opening. Out on the wing and confident three for Jada Stinson again, the freshman from Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Yeah, she's a feisty guard, stretches out the defense. She can shoot that three ball right there. You saw it. You know, she could really say she's from about six or seven hometowns, grew up in a military family, and there's a naval base about a half hour from the Memphis campus that her parents most recently have transferred to. I know they were excited the moment that they knew that Memphis was a possibility for their daughter. Her brother already had played ball at Christian Brothers in Memphis. Coach Huey's uh, recruiting philosophy is interesting. He likes to recruit kids that are on hor horrible programs. I mean, like if he can get a kid that, that no one's seen on a, a bad AAU team. You know, he, uh, he all the coaches go sit in the gym and they watch the kids on the great AAU yeah. teams. When he tries to find them on the bad AAU teams, this one kid that's going to score 50 points that has to do everything. And he likes those kind of kids that have been under adversity. So uh, that that's pretty uh, interesting style of recruiting. Well, at least this year it has paid off. Uh, a lot of those players last year were overachieving freshmen and sophomores. He thought things really started to click in the conference tournament last year and was excited about what was ahead this year. Right now, he looks on as a freshman for Memphis is at the line, Elena Davis, after her rebound. She's a good-looking freshman. Nice, strong body. Uh, getting the minutes maybe a little early. They, they, you know, She talked about you know trying to get her fitness up. It, her offseason wasn't as good as she you know, maybe needed to have as a freshman coming in. They don't know what they're doing. So now she's starting to get her legs about her, and uh, she, she looks pretty good. She's a 6'2 freshman. You were talking about how Harris for the Cougars thought she was a post trapped in a smaller body. Well, uh, Coach McFerrin talking about Davis says, here is a bigger player with handles. She's not scared about bringing that ball up the floor. Well, there's Cr uh, Creighton getting an offensive board. Ooh, a big flying knee. And let's see if somehow this goes against Harris despite getting the worst of that exchange. Seemed like it could be... Uh, just a double foul or inadvertent. They are both going for the ball. But nope, she couldn't get down. She has to be able to come down. Just to give her space to come down. I would not have been surprised if they had opted to review that. But as you noted, once the player was airborne, they determined that she needed the ability to come down safely. She might have tried to stretch that come down, though, but, you know, tough call. Tigers yep. up by three. Nice feed will expand the lead. And Cheyenne Creighton able to kiss it off of the glass. No weak side help at all on that lob play. So that weak side has to come down. They haven't been shooting a three, so I don't understand why they're not there. Creighton with nine double-doubles this year. 17 for her career would be a big part of any kind of victory here tonight. And for the Cougars, that's Julia Blackshell Fair. We talk about freshmen. She's another one out of Fairfield, California. Well, they needed that. They need a little bit of a post game, and that was a great step through by her. Both of these teams will have the seven-player rotation. The difference is, for one, it's out of necessity. For the Cougars, it's more out of design. Yeah, I don't like that lob in to, to James. She's, she's too young. I don't think she, she was able to, I mean... You know, she can't handle that, or Davis, I mean. Barnes with a nice dish to Branch just in time to set up Branch for the easy two. Much higher scoring affair here in the second quarter after Memphis led 11-7 in the first. It's the Cougars battling back here at home. A victory in the American on the line tonight here on ADN. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle, a big save, a clutch hit, and a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. Power is respecting an opponent, 
officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. Be American. Power. 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 Power for life. Don't miss the chance to see your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Mohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. Well, the Cougars have slightly edged Memphis here in the second quarter, outscoring them 10 to 7 to pull back within one here on their home court of sorts but it's turnover so far today for both programs memphis and houston have combined for 21 memphis again has been bit by the turnover bug in the second quarter yeah both teams have been a little sloppy but uh memphis actually has done a great job i'm sure that coaches is, is happy with where they're at right now they've got 17 uh 12 points in the paint 17 rebounds that's pretty good for what you would want them to do early in the game um uh, Harris has eight points for Houston, so um, pretty good first quarter, uh, second quarter here. In the five years since being a part of the American, uh, off the top of my head, Memphis, I believe, has had an underclassman at point guard all but one of those years. Bria Wilder Cochran finally was a junior point guard, healthy enough for them last year, but again out this year once again, and a lot of that has to do with how well you're able to control possession. Well, I think it's huge. You have to have a point guard that is a veteran point guard. I mean, it, it's tough to win without somebody veteran. It really is. And I look at Houston's backcourt and the two Harrises, each one of them, I mean, they're they're leading the conference in, in assists and steals. And to have uh, J Jasmine has 3.7 assists and then Angela has 3.6. I mean, what kind of, I mean, that's great if you're a coach. I mean, they're seeing the floor. you got two people feeding, feeding their team. It's a guard-oriented game when you get down into the playoffs, and I, that's where I see them doing pretty well as they, as they go on. You can admit it. Angela Harris is Angela Beck's favorite Harris, right? Angela Harris, well, just, yeah, maybe. How'd you know? I mean, what was the Y'all yeah, got thing? those se secret meetings? Yeah. I don't know if they call her Angie or Angel or... Oh, that's what they did for short for me, but... Anyway, Cougars back within one. Angela Harris is having a great game, though. She's doing a lot of things right for her team. Meanwhile, there is the Jasmine variety of Harris connecting, and it's the Cougars back up. She's like, you better start talking about me. We tried to early on, but her teammates got involved. I've been impressed with how Memphis has handled the trapping defense. That's Jasmine. Jasmine's got great percentages, too. I mean, I'm looking at her. She's taking 122 threes, and she's shooting 38%. I'm saying, oh, they take it with that kind of percentage. But anyway, I think Memphis is doing a great job of handling their pressure. I mentioned University of Houston's in a very unique situation when they knew that they were going to be without their home arena this year as it's under renovation especially in the state of Texas, there are not a lot of Division I universities that are as close as the University of Houston and Texas State University are. You can go three or four hours between campuses of D1 universities, but the fact that TSU was so close and they are willing to make this arena available for practices for the Cougars two to three times a week, Ron Huey said uh, Texas Southern has just been a fantastic partner in all of this. Well, it has a lot to do with Coach Huey and how great of a person he is. Great, that was a great take. Elmore steps back. She's shooting about 37% from beyond the arc and drains that one. But he's a gracious person. He's a humanistic person. I mean, he's going to be thanking them. I mean, he's just, he's the kind of guy you want to do it for. That's why you do see the Southwestern Athletic Conference logo down there on the court. And Texas Southern, of course, at midcourt, for those of you who tuned in late. Another nice open look and making no mistake on the three Stinson. 
Well, I talked to Coach Huey a little bit about what he thought about Memphis, and he's like, I'm, I mean, if they hang around, that's not a good thing because they're hard to put away. And I'm sure he's not too happy about them hanging like they are because they're, they're doing whatever they want to do right now. You would love to make them exert more energy just trying to catch up in a ball game, but right now, Tigers have been your front runners for much of this ball game. Houston's only trailed for, or pardon me, Houston's only led for two and a half minutes tonight. Well, I'm wondering where his press is. I, he, you know, I'm surprised he's not pressing a team like this. Well, that's been a big part of Houston's turnaround this year. They are determined not to allow you to cross half court. We saw that hit and miss against the Shockers on Saturday. But finally, Houston was able to clamp down and seal up that victory. That's Elena Davis again on that offensive board putback. Good for her. Just a freshman. Harris trying to shake free from two defenders. Pass inside, and that's just about how you would draw it up for Octavia Barnes. Showed a lot of patience on that. The ball didn't hit the floor too much, and they found the seam in the, in the defense. So for Mimi Barnes, those are her first two points. And we've now seen six. Well, Taylor Barnes took it down to the corner, ate her dribble, and then threw a cross-court pass that was not, not, not very good. I misspoke. Those are points three and four for Barnes in seven minutes of play. Nice return on investment. Yeah, a lot of turnovers in this game. Inside the final two minutes of overall a fairly quick-moving first half. Minders stick around just before the teams make their way to the locker room. Megan Trammell will have a chance to catch up with one of our head coaches. Talk to the other coach uh, coming out of the locker room before the start of the third quarter as well. And they'll get a walk. Cougars another turnover here. We need to get a little isolation on Coach McFerrin because she's actually working hard on every play. And you talked about the defensive stance, but I think she won it on that one. She really was, she had the whole thing covered. If she had eligibility left, she looks like she's ready to go. Yeah. And obviously in practice, sometimes she may feel like she needs to go. They, when you only have seven players available, that is not enough for a five-on-five -five scrimmage. Uh, they've been fortunate to have players like Taylor Williams come back to campus after graduating last year. A nice offensive rebound and put back, and the Tigers are doing the right things here to close out the opening half. Cheyenne Creighton, no surprise. And well, I thought that hit the top of the the. the Glass or the so I thought that would be side out there, but they I don't know I didn't see it good enough so. Cougars a she minute with it. eight left trailing by six. Well, they knew Creighton was going to have to have a big game for him and she has. No rush. And Creighton with the rebound. Well, your leading scorer, Stinson for Memphis with eight, Creighton with eight of her own, and for Houston, Angela Harris with eight. Here in this first half. I think their diligence in running their sets has really helped them. They're setting a ton of screens on Houston right now, and they're not getting through them all. Elena Davis giving Melissa McFerrin's Tigers seven rebounds already in this first half. But on the bench right now. Trying to draw some contact, shot was well off the mark, and we have a little over a half minute to go here in the opening half. As the Cougars will have a chance to cut into this deficit. Memphis led Houston 11-7 after the first, and right now outscoring Houston 17-15 here in the second quarter to stretch their lead a bit. I guess we don't have a shot clock on this. Uh, 21 seconds left here on the shot clock. Uh, just marginal difference as the time is ticking down. They should be able to heave up one final look. Look for the Harrises. Five seconds left here in the opening half. From 14. And that's going to be a shot clock violation. Tigers will have the ball with .6 seconds and that may not be to their benefit. They probably would have preferred to just heave it up ahead. Now they'll have to inbound it. 
Yeah, it looked like they broke a play or something. Good, if it goes, it'll come up short. So the Tigers on the road tonight. Again, shorthanded, that's nothing new. Melissa McFerrin about to make her way over to our Megan Trammell for their halftime conversation. Let's check in with Megan and Coach. Coach, your team has the tempo the majority of the first half. What do you have to do to extend the lead in the second? Well, first of all, we have to continue to take care of the basketball. Um, obviously, we've turned it over a few times, but I think we've got more really good shots um, than we haven't. And I think the other thing is our defense has held. I mean, this is a really high-scoring team. Held them to 22 points. They've missed some shots. We've done a really nice job on the boards. Thanks for your time, Coach. We appreciate Thank it. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. The Tigers hold Houston without any points in the final two minutes of that opening half and will take a six-point advantage into the locker room. You're watching American Women's Basketball tonight on ADN. Tigers up 28-22. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Happy Monday and welcome in to the ADN studio. Hope your week is off to a great start. Thanks for tuning in to an all new episode of The Rise. I'm Haley Outen. Let's take a look at who took home this week's league honors after standout performances on the hardwood this past week. On the men's side for the second time this season, Tulsa forward Junior E2 earns the conference's player of the week honors. In a 2-0 week for the Golden Hurricane, E2 posted his fifth and sixth double doubles of the season helping his team climb to fourth in the American. E2 opened the week with 17 points and a career-high 15 rebounds against SMU before posting another 17-point effort at USF, adding 12 boards. Another familiar face taking home some conference hardware for the third time this season. Rookie of the Week honors go to ECU redshirt freshman Sean Williams. Williams erupted for a career-high 30 points in ECU's overtime victory against Memphis, knocking down six of ten three-pointers in the process, matching his career best. On the week, the guard averaged over 22 points per game. A handful of other players had impressive performances as well. Here's a look at this week's American Honor Roll. On the women's side, UConn forward Gabby Williams takes home this week's top honor. In two wins last week, the senior averaged over 13 points, 12 rebounds, and six assists with a pair of double-doubles for the top-ranked Huskies. In UConn's 83-58 win at number 6 South Carolina, she totaled 14 points on 6 of 8 shooting with a team-high 14 rebounds and 5 assists. Meanwhile, Freshman of the Week honors went to ECU guard LaShonda Monk. The rookie was the Pirates' leading scorer in both contests last week. Monk averaged 19.5 points, 6.5 assists, and 7 steals in 2 wins. On Tuesday, she set a new career high with 19 points and dished out seven assists in ECU's 77-67 victory over Wichita State. On Saturday, in a victory over SMU, Monk dropped 20 points and recorded the second highest single game steal total in ECU program history with 10. And here's a look at the performances that received recognition on this week's conference honor roll. Thanks for joining us today on The Rise. Be sure to check back later tonight as we'll bring you an all-new episode of Mondays with Mike where we dive into the top men's basketball headlines across the league. Also, keep an eye out on Wednesday for our new show called American Round Ball where we welcome in basketball analyst Monica McNutt to talk about what's going on in women's hoops. Have a great week, everybody.
is the chance to see your team cut down the nets at the American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship. All the excitement of tournament basketball starts March 8th and runs to the 11th at the Amway Center in Orlando. For tickets, call the Amway Center box office or visit theamerican.org for more information. In a city known for doing things our way, there's a university that's driven to do the same, to blur the outdated line between academic pursuits and active ones, not just to learn, but to experience, to create, solve, build, to explore and express, to lead. Because an education isn't something you get, it's something you do. I don't think it changes from year to year for Melissa at Memphis. I mean, this is her 10th season, which is pretty fantastic. And we've always been a defensive-oriented team, an up-tempo, full-court, exciting brand of basketball. I think adding the depth and fortunately being healthier than we were last year will allow us to play that style more this year. We play big teams. Like last year, we played a lot of big teams, came out with wins. And so I think it's just the fact that everyone's on the same page of believing that uh, what we can do. You know, we have high dreams going to the tournament, postseason play, so everyone believes it, so that's what makes it fun. Last year, we dressed about seven for the majority of the conference season due to injury, unfortunately. And fortunately this year, we're healthier, we're deeper. Uh, we've added some really nice post play, which was uh, an area of, it was a blind spot for us last year. And so the, the biggest difference is we have more healthy bodies available this year. Honestly, I think it starts with the team. Like Team success to me would be success for myself and with everybody else, so um, achieving our goal playing in postseason. Our team chemistry is very strong, and that's a big improvement from last year. Not that it wasn't good, but our players had a very productive summer together training, and so you can see that they're really enjoying each other and they're communicating better with each other. So there are some things that we can control, to get into March and other things that we can't and we just want to really max out on the things that we can. Potentially Shrighton Songs over to first. In time double play as that ends the game. I want people to understand when you come to play Houston, it's going to be a grind. You know, that team at the end of the day, they're tough, they are, are committed to winning, and they're going to do everything necessary up under the sun to be successful. I want them to come in and see the culture of what we have. You know, kids that's going to be uh, on point, on time, and, and just doing everything necessary to be successful across the board. Success for a team, it doesn't necessarily come on the court, it comes with your growth. So learning from everything that you've been through, but also determining how you became a better individual. So bringing that into a team concept is very important. We've been through so much adversity, and coming from that, we just know what we need to do. We know where we've been, and we know where we need to go. I want to be playing in the tournament. You know, we talked to our girls about, um, you know, postseason play is a must. You know, and it starts with our conference. And so why can't we be the ones that's playing in the last day of the, of the American Conference Tournament? 
You know, why can't why can't it be us? Why can't it be us in the top five of the conference? Why can't it be us in postseason play? The ultimate goal this year is get past the second round in conference and more than 20 wins in top five in the conference. I think that's why the WNIT called and they want us because, again, to see the thing that we're building there in Houston on top of all the facilities and, and our football team and men's basketball team, women's basketball is right there. And I think we'll get a chance to show that this year. to see your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Mohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle. A big save. A clutch hit. And a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. Power is respecting an opponent, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power. 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 Power for life. A six-point ball game at the half here on the American Digital Network, and the Tigers looking for that elusive third win in conference play, but have performed well here on the road. Lincoln Rose, Coach Angela Beck with you, and well, We've seen both teams find a little bit of success both outside and in, but it's more about trying to overcome turnovers early on. Well, Memphis has gotten better shots. They've out-rebounded them and had more points in the paint. So Houston's going to have to bring their defense. They haven't led with their defense in this game, and they haven't shot the ball very well. Harris has had a much better start than she had in that victory over Wichita State. It'll be a big part of a Houston comeback if they are able to manage to find their fourth straight victory here in conference. play, take a look at some of the stats that stand out. Well, obviously, Memphis has shot the ball better, 46% to 31% for Houston, and then the three balls have been about the same. So, but points in the paint, 16 to 8, and then the turnover ball. So, again, it is halftime here in Houston. Cougars trailing the Tigers by six. We'll talk to Father Coog, Ron Hewitt, when we come back. Potentially Shrighton Thaws over to first. In time, double play, and that ends the game. Well, if you followed the American this year, you can never chalk up any game as an automatic victory from one midweek matchup to a weekend. Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck with you. And that's the case again here tonight. The parity in this league, the way it has continued to get stronger and stronger. Uh, Tigers tonight trying to turn some heads. Well, I think they've done a great job of just keeping them in check. That zone is just messing them up and keeping them off kilter. And the pace is in the Tigers' favor. Let's go ahead and check in with Megan. She's with head coach Ron Huey of the Cougars. Coach, one thing you wanted to focus on today was tempo. You guys' rhythm went in and out in the first. What do you have to do to extend the lead in the second? Well, we got to rebound the basketball, play solid defense, and be able to push the ball. That'll allow us, when we get our defense going, to get our offense going, to be able to push tempo. Thanks for your time, Coach. Good luck to you in the second. Thank you so much. Let me hit that light. And again, Ron Huey. Things clicking this year, 7-3 in conference place. Now 18-6 and six overall on the year, but a slow start here today. And we talk about players we isolated at the top of the broadcast, and Creighton 
On her way to a double-double. Harris right there, close to her average as well, putting up 20 points a night. Yeah, Harris has uh, had a couple threes and, you know, but she hasn't had as many touches the way that zone is pushed out to her. They're not giving her too much room. Creighton, Creighton, though, you know, they're just getting better shots in at the post, and I think that's causing Houston a little bit of problem. So Memphis outscored Houston in both of the opening two quarters. See if Houston can get things turned around. Of course, they're only down a couple of scores, down by six. We'll see if Houston comes out with that pressure defense, that run and jump that they're known for, and usually they're a 94-foot team, and tonight, for some reason, they haven't been. Uh, Melissa McFerrin's Tigers. Of course, we have noted the obvious. Just seven players available. We saw a scare with Taylor Barnes early, but she's been able to bounce back. The sophomore giving her 18 minutes in that first half. She only got seven minutes from her bench, but for the most part, that's by design. Cheyenne Creighton, the senior, she's made it, uh, put it pretty bluntly to her coach. It's my senior year. I don't want to come off the floor. Unless I do something really bad. So I guess that's, that'd be cool if every senior could go tell their coach that. And she, does, she figures if they've just got seven going, she would just assume uh, be out there playing basketball for every minute she can. Well, the way she's playing, I wouldn't take her out any, anyway. Elmore tries to send it in and a turnover to pick, at, pick back up on our storyline from the first half. Well, let's talk about how many of these turnovers are forced. That's an unforced error. She gets up off, the, off in the air and tries to dish it, and there's no place to go. Houston has 22 points. 15 of those 22 have come off of Memphis turnovers. If they score here, I predict the press. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I know you thought they were a little light on the press compared to what we have seen them have success with this year. Like I said, if they score, but... But, you know, I think that they don't, this tempo so far has been in Memphis's favor, and they haven't really made them do anything that they haven't wanted to do. Working it inside to the freshman. Well, they're running isolations, and they're not putting enough pressure on that basketball. They've got full vision inside to make that, you know, perfect pass, and that's tough. Now, Elena Davis now with seven points, already better than her season average of five. She's been one of your big performer, performers here today. Seven points, seven rebounds. Uh, late to close on that three, which almost was able to angle off the glass, but no good for Jasmine. Harris plucked it away and then returning the favor, Bria Elmore. That's just a nice battle between the sophomore and the senior. Nice battle or poor uh, dribbling skills for that series there. Tomato, tomato. Harris. And again, tying her up. And a nice effort there by Taylor Barnes, the sophomore. They've been running a short corner attack where they stick a body in the short corner and try to sneak behind that zone, but they haven't been able to get there because they're clogging it up inside. Angela Harris was looking for her third three-pointer. That's her first miss from beyond the arc. I mean, there's not any help in there. If they initially throw it down there, there's, there's nobody there to guard that post. And ultimately, the Tigers one and done on the other end. Angela Harris up the court, three pink uniforms in front of her, undeterred, and ultimately, despite a quality look, could not come away with points. Other way, the Tigers, that one may have been deflected by the right-handed Dorian Branch. Well, Taylor Barnes decided she was gonna go coast to coast on that. I don't really think that's what is in their best interest at this time, but she felt it, I guess. I think keeping this tempo the way they had it and taking their time on offense because they can get it, it into the post anytime they want. Cougars still have only led for two and a half minutes in this ball game. It's like they don't really, I don't know. There's something wrong here with the Cougars. They're just really lackadaisical. That was an unforced error right there. 
I think Angela Harris has her game on, and then I don't, I don't really know what's happening. Step inside the arc, driving for a closer look. Creighton can't get it to go. Put back, Davis with her eighth rebound, no. Harris to Harris. Jazz comes in for a closer look. Mid-air tying that ball up once more. Great effort by Bria Elmore. Well, talking to Coach, she said, Look, we're not throwing any towels in here. We're going to fight for everything we got, and that's a good indicator here of attacking the person with the dribble. So Memphis with an eight-point lead intact, trying to stretch it to double figures for the first time. Instead, a turnover as Maya West has had that one wind up right in her arms. Well, there's an eight-foot rule in basketball, and that means you can't be further than eight, eight feet away from the ball, and they're too deep, so when they get caught in that little trap, that's too long of a pass, and that's easy to pick off. Let's see if the Cougars can start putting something together. That was Hawkins behind the zone. Good look. Tigers trying to get those two points back. Won't do it. One and done. Well, Houston is 8-2 and two this year in these home games on the campus of Texas Southern. As they've had a nice showing, especially in conference play. Their two home losses... We're against Cincinnati and UConn. Well, no, Memphis has already played UConn twice and USF. You look at the rest of their schedule, and each and every game, if they have the right mindset, could be a potential victory. Uh, here come the Cougars. Angela Harris looking to become the first Cougar in double figures. Uh, she has 10 points in 19 minutes here tonight. Creighton inside of the freshman. And look at that, another offensive rebound and put back as Davis rewards herself. That's it's too many lookers. Like, she's the only one under the basket with one other player, and everyone's just watching her go back up. Davis is now a point and a rebound shy of a double-double here midway in the third quarter. She's definitely doing what she's got to do. Good rebounding. She's, she's got good finesse with her, her touch. I mean, not many big girl freshmen have that, have that kind of touch. So here we see them extend their defense a little bit. Memphis already has 17 turnovers, so they need to move the basketball and find the open man. A late dish to Davis. That would be the good way to do it. And yeah, just have to be able to find the punctuation on that. Angela Harris the other way. Going in for the offensive rebound, and Sarethia Hawkins just wanted it more. Yeah, she's highly capable. I think she's starting to pick up her game a little bit right now. Hawkins with that rebound has now moved to number 10 all time on the Houston Cougars rebounding charts for a career. I guess her five for the ball game. Pass up ahead to Harris, able to corral it and just took too long to gather the ball as never giving up on the play the other way was Bria Elmore. What a block. That was a great block. Midway through the third quarter, Memphis still hanging on to a four-point edge. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American.
miss the chance to see your team cut down the nets at the American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship. All the excitement of tournament basketball starts March 8th and runs to the 11th at the Amway Center in Orlando. For tickets, call the Amway Center box office or visit theamerican.org for more information. Cougars, winners of their last three games, continue to stay in the hunt for potentially the number two seed in this conference when the tournament rolls around in less than a month now. Check back in with Megan Trammell. Well, guys, I talked to Coach Huey earlier. We talked a lot about his transition from last year to this year, and he was telling me that a big transition for him has been his locker room. He said the atmosphere is outstanding. Last year there was a lot of me, 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 and I'll do this, but this year it's become a lot of we, and his team's working together, cheering each other on, and he said it's just changed the chemistry of his locker room. Yeah, Megan, he mentioned guys. to us uh, in a conference call that there was one practice where he put – one player on one side of the court and five on the other and said, all right, there's the team, let's go. And that one player spoke up and said, but it's just me. And he mentioned, well, that's how you've been playing. It's a little bit easier when you have teammates involved. And uh, I think point was taken. And this has been a pretty cohesive unit. I think they know how to pick up the tempo when they need to. Unfortunately, it's a bad habit to get into. I think they could pick it up quicker and they tend to pick up they kind they play to the level of whatever they're playing sometimes and it gets them in a little bit of a hole but you'll he says they have six gears i would say they've been in third gear or maybe second gear for most of this game so they really haven't gotten any offensive transition buckets and that says a lot to memphis getting back but also they take they haven't taken that many bad shots I want to brag on both these programs. Ron Huey inherited a program with a GPA that was right around a 1.2, and now they're at a 2.9. Meanwhile, Melissa McFerrin for a ninth straight year, team GPA right around 3.0. Well, McFerrin has uh, both team, both coaches have him doing a lot of community services and, and really uh, doing great in the classroom. Obviously, the Houston area in the headlines with the hurricane this past fall. And certainly this area was one of the hard hit where if you went up and down the neighborhoods afterwards, you'd see a lot of uh, individuals' property put out on the curb after it had been ruined. Well, that was unbelievable defense by Jasmine Harris. To, to That's a that's a four-point turnaround. I don't, I don't like that look there. Uh, Dorian Branch will be the first Cougar tonight to shoot free throws, but she took exception to the foul. Yeah, I mean, she hadn't really done a whole lot all game, so I'm not sure what she's thinking here. And let's see if there wasn't a subsequent call afterwards. It's a little taunting. And they're going to have the two teams go to their respective benches. So that's a common foul. And I think, as you mentioned, the subsequent gesture over towards the freshman, Jada Stinson. Maybe what's being discussed right now. I mean, it was a just, it was a, it was a play on the ball all the way. And like I said, I haven't seen Dorian Branch really doing a whole lot. So I don't, I, I don't think there was a lot of exchange between them so they do count the basket it's 32 30 and the question is uh, after the fact here now this is going to be sorted out well, maybe what branch being a sophomore you know she wants to you know kind of set the sets the stage a little bit to the freshman but these these officials have been great all game it's been a well-called game and very few fouls in the game we talked about Houston not even being at the line until then, so. Now, officials have the ability to consult the monitors. I, I have to imagine you're just going to see a common foul. There is nothing flagrant about the initial foul committed by the Tigers, and then subsequently, not much more than uh, just getting in another player's face. Yeah, usually I wouldn't think it would mean a whole lot. Uh, but the fact that she went directly to her and then kind of looked her up here, uh, that's, 
I mean, she's, she's, you know, it's enough to have that official notice it. Yeah, and here's the initial foul that will have her at the free throw line to shoot one after you count the bucket. Maybe the clench fists, you know, I don't know. But it, it's, yeah, it's, I don't, not sure why it's taken this long to. It was not the ideal response, but can't imagine it will lead to much after they look it over. If anything, just a, a taunting foul. If nothing else, this gives us a good look at Jeff Brightwell, the radio voice of Memphis. Does a great job for the Tigers. And uh, Gerald Sanchez is on the opposite end. This is a conference with a lot of great, talented, dedicated individuals providing coverage for their programs. Well, this, this, these are two young teams, two, two teams in, you know, that are trying to put it together. And uh, I think 32-30 in the thir third quarter, if you told Coach McFerrin that she would be there, she'd take it any day. So we'll see how it plays out. There's Jeff. Yep. Must not be any CrossFit competitions tonight. Jeff was a part of a marathon game, I believe, uh, five overtimes, maybe you know, five overtimes with you. I was there, yep. We, it, it was kind of like you got numb after the third or fourth one, then you found out it was a record. And then, you know, you, do, you just try to call to the best of your ability, but you're like, what What just, what just? it happened? You know, you keep thinking the other team's going to win, and it just never happened. Again, after the common foul, you count the bucket, there's the free throw, and all of that delay to review uh, not much of anything. That might fire the Cougars up a little bit. Maybe they needed that. Well, it's the team with only seven players that probably didn't mind the rest. Very true. Memphis lead is down to one. Kick out. Good look. And just cannot get it to go. But another rebound for the Tigers brought in by Barnes. Barnes has done a good job on that weak side. Nine to shoot. How about a 17-footer good? Well, she can shoot that, and Coach likes her shooting it. I mean, she's shooting 36% from three and 47% from two, so I say give her the ball anytime you can. Cheyenne Creighton now the senior, but back when Melissa McFerrin first discovered her, it was just a couple of weeks before signing day. Got her to sign on the dotted line, and it turned out they got a good one for the past four years. They didn't see her in person until April. The signings were in May. And that is a long two, won't go. Rebound to Elmore. Again, Memphis can stretch its lead. Tigers will host SMU this weekend. While the Cougars will head up to Tulsa. And a walk. They never get a shot off back the other way. Well, that was good defense that time. They were running a little rub play to get her open, and uh, Harris just was not having any of it. She, she is a feisty little guard that plays a lot bigger than she is. They'll say she was a little quick out of the blocks. <laughs> As, again, Houston will have a chance to tie it up here. Still have only led for two and a half minutes back in the first quarter. Baseline, good. Back within one. As Sarethia Hawkins is going to be a big part of a comeback. Well, Hawkins is tough. There's another. There's a steal. Jazz Harris. Two on one. Numbers game. Angela Harris with the finish. And it's Houston out ahead. The assist from Dorian Branch. And there's that swarming press now. And an offensive foul gives it back to Houston. Well, you knew they were capable. You know, just just in a quick nanosecond, they can they can turn it on. Well, Memphis wants a timeout. 
They have seen the lead evaporate. Houston up by one and have gotten the basketball back. Take a look at Ron Huey, his coaching staff, former WNBA player Ty Dillard there on the right. Well, we take a look back at some of the memorable performances from this last week. You and I saw LaShonda Monk for ECU, and she was a big part of a double-digit comeback against Wichita State in those shockers. As, again, against SMU, she would also record the second-highest single-game steal total in ECU's history with 10. A lot of exciting freshmen to follow this year in the American Monk with a great week. And UConn, it came out this week. They have four players in the running for National Player of the Year. Gabby Williams, though, was your American Player of the Week this past week, averaging a double-double along with six assists. And there are a couple of outings. And again, UConn continues to step outside of conference, picked up another top-10 victory against those Gamecocks. South Carolina's having a tough time. and Everyone's, you know, gunning for them since they won the title. That's what happens. They're getting beat all over the place. Here's the rest of your honor roll here in the American. Kaba, a standout freshman in her own right. Frazier for the Pirates. Of course, Jazz Harris on display tonight. Uh, Jesperson as well as Atkinson for the Bulls and the Owls. Well, those Tigers were leading much of tonight. Now find themselves down by one in the most recent turnover. Uh, prompted the timeout called by Melissa McFerrin. Well, the press, that's only like the third time tonight we've seen the press, and they can do that pretty much any time they feel like it. Harris, Jasmine Harris, one-on-one is deadly because she can pick your pocket as, as quick as anybody, and she's one of the best thieves in the American. Ron Huey has a few more players suited up around him as opposed to the Tigers bench. With that said, a little bit easier for your uh, travel agent to just book flights for seven players and staff, but Bria Wilder Cochran, shoulder, knee, just about everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. A very talented young athlete who's battled injuries now for a third year in her career. Vanessa Dick Dixon, the freshman, uh, out with concussion-like symptoms. Asia Jones out with the knee. Uh, Dominique Miller, the shoulder, and again, they knew they would be without Jones uh, due to the transfer rules. Uh, she'll be a sophomore with a lot of eligibility left come next year after transferring over from Old Dominion University. You have to think a little bit about the trainer of that staff, though. Uh, the trainer has does, to Does be, the trainer get hazard pay? Oh, gosh. I mean, trainers, first of all, are the most, you know, the hardest working people Besides SIDs, I think. SIDs work hard, but, I mean, tra trainers, and to have that many injuries on a team, it's just constant, all the rehab. Well, how, how Memphis comes out and attacks this, obviously Houston's fired up a little bit. They're back in fourth gear. And they need to just settle down, not get caught in one-on-one -on -one action, and pass ahead, see the open man. Try not to dribble through it like they are right there, but they did. Drop it down, denied from behind, but Jazz Harris will be called for contact instead of the, queen, the clean swat. They say contact to the head. I'd like to see that replay because she's so athletic. They've gotten a piece of the ponytail yeah. at the very least. Good replay there by our crew here. Asking you shall receive. There's Jasmine James at the line. Now 9 of 15 for the season from the charity stripe. And came over from San Jacinto Junior College here in Texas. One for two. even at 35 with a little over 11 minutes in regulation to go. Jazz rattles one through. Cougars up by three. She'll slip on the other end and transition to nine. Oh, no, ma'am. Sarethia Hawkins comes through and clears it out. Well, Hawkins has done some key things tonight, and most of them on the defensive end, and that is a great swat from behind. Momo says no, no. <laughs> she sure does. It's 
Somehow they must have got a wake-up call. Tigers still with plenty of time on the shot clock and come away with points. Jaden Stinson, we talk about the talented freshman in this league. And she's going to have a bright future ahead, already averaging seven in her debut season. A Jazz Harris will pull a three right back. Well, they think she's, they, Houston thinks she's one of the top players in the league. Uh, Jasmine thinks she is, and she's proven to be, because down the stretch, you better find her. You can't give her openings. Well, the Cougars now six of 18 from beyond the arc. The two Harrises have combined for all six of those triples. Jazz with four. Here's the one-on-one -on -one defense by Jasmine Harris. They don't like people to cross over dribble in front of their defense. Second chance. Creighton in there battling. Yeah, just unaware of the clock. Well, the Cougars take over in the third, outscoring Memphis 19 to nine, and they turn the deficit into a four-point lead heading into the fourth in Houston. Potentially Shrek and Thaw's over to first in time double play and that ends the game. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle. A big save. A clutch hit and a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. Power is respecting an opponent, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power. 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 Power for life. Well, Tigers, for the first time today, will enter a quarter. And, of course, this being the fourth quarter now, trailing. Looking for a comeback approach. Let's check back in with Megan Trammell, court son. Guys, Memphis is wearing their pink uniforms tonight, and the coaches are sporting their pink shirts to support Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And that is something that hits home with this team as number five, Bria Elmore, lost her mother last December. December of 2016, and it's a loss that this whole team has gone through together. When I talked to them earlier today and asked what they hope, they just said with this awareness, they hope women will go get their mammograms, and they hope that it'll really bring awareness and save some lives. Guys? Yeah, her mom, Diane Elmore, and uh, Bria, an impressive young lady, and has really been one of the leaders of this group and has been someone that this team for the past now little over a year has rallied around. You know, they had high expectations for this season. Injury bug has slowed them down a bit. Tigers still with a chance here on the road to come up with a victory. Yeah, I think Bria just wants to be successful for her mother and, and in honor of her. Has a chance, I noted earlier, to wrap up this year with a thousand career points. Averaging about 15 a night. So Cougars with the basketball up by four. We're here on the campus of Texas Southern University while the home arena of the Cougars this year is being renovated. Has both the men and women for University of Houston playing here. Well, Houston's come out hot. They've shot 47% here in this third quarter. And uh, their defense obviously has picked it up and uh, 
scored points for them. Like that. Look, they will swarm any basketball, whether you're hanging on to it with both hands or not. Cougars just don't like it if they don't have the ball. Well, conversely, Memphis has struggled shooting 25% from the field. Um, just can't connect and, and then had too many turnovers, 22 turnovers in the game right now. And we still have a quarter to go. Oh, nice feed inside to Elmore. And she'll add two more. Well, that was a perfect uh, pinch post feed by Creighton to Elmore for the finish. She has seven points to go with her seven rebounds, looking to become the third Tiger in double figures, along with Stenson and Creighton, who each have ten tonight. Davis off of the bench with nine. I'd almost run a triangle and two in this situation and try to keep the Harrises out. I mean, you've got to guard those two Harrises outside in this zone. It's giving them a little bit too much room right now, and they're getting comfortable. And Melissa McFerrin with a lot of impressive stops on her resume before a decade ago she took over this Memphis program. It's Angela Harris. She's from Cypress, Texas. That's right here in the Houston area. The area that produced the Oguamake sisters and a nice dish into Hawkins for two. Other way, Tigers, Elmore takes advantage and she'll go to the free throw line for one more. And she's being advised about uh, something she had to say for a Houston player. I don't think there's a lot of love loss here with these two teams. I think she did not appreciate the foul across the back of her head. Yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, no one appreciates it, but it is a contact sport that we're playing. We're not playing tennis. Uh, so you're going to get hit a few times. My tennis analyst will insist it's a contact sport and then reference uh, another croquet. <laughs> but the Harrises, both Harris, Angela and Jasmine, they have ice in their veins. And at this point in the game, you have to know where they're at. Elmore just shooting one free throw here. Chance to pull it within one. And cannot get it to go. And Creighton beaten for the rebound by Hawkins. Branch able to save it. Jazz Harris trying to shake loose from Elmore. And gets the foul on the senior. One of the things Jasmine's trying to improve in her game is her mid-range jumper. And you'll notice either she's going to shoot the three or she's going to take it to the rack. So you really don't want to bail her out in that situation because she doesn't like that pull-up jumper. And they were trying to go right to plan A underneath the basket. And the Tigers deny that inbound play. Cougars lead right now just at two. First man to man we've seen all night. Angela Harris looking for her third three. No, Jazz with the rebound and another foul on the Tigers who just can't get this ball back. That's the third foul. Make it second foul on Elmore. Oh, strong move, but denied by the freshman. Great defense by Davis. And Davis, nine points, nine rebounds. That time, a block. All this coming off the bench. Houston's doing a good job of denying any entry pass that they want to make. So we got to, they're over dribbling here and getting stuck. Five to shoot. Davis. As a coach, that's what you want right there. That's the perfect opportunity. They just didn't make it. Harris to Harris. And Jazz with a three, her fifth of the night. Got to run her off the line. You cannot let her sit still. Cougars up by five now with seven to go. It's a tall task to do that, but. Davis into Creighton. And the senior will look for one more at the line. 
Well, advantage for Memphis right now is their post game. They've got to go there early and often. And all they have to do is, it's a small task, right? Just get Jasmine Harris under control because she's taken over. How about Jasmine Harris? Five three-pointers. As Houston up, though, just by three. Has one free throw here. And there's a three-point play for Creighton. She leads the way with 13 for the Tigers. Harris with 15, all via multiples of three, leading the way for the Cougars. The two Harrises with 27 points combined. And Angela Harris is going to pester Elmore all the way across midcourt. Yeah, they, Angela Harris does a great job of putting pressure on the basketball. Her hands are always moving. She stays right in front of her. That would have been a big take had she made it. Jazz looking up the court. Got to pick her up. Jasmine Harris only standing in her own way. Can't believe she missed the bunny. Like I said, she's going to get to the rim or she's going to shoot the three. So you got you have to make her pull up and shoot it. She went almost undetected all the way to the basket. And she'll get a quick breather. Ronald well, Huey can afford to pull players out of the game for a little stretch. Elmore backs out. They're not getting much penetration here. Eight seconds left and they haven't made it past the top of the key. Well, Davis creates an opening for Elmore and Davis goes inside for her 10th rebound of the night. And now she can hit that double-double mark here at the charity strike. So far the last three series though, they've been taking this you know, 28 footer from the top and they're not going to their bigs, which they need to go to. So it's playing in Houston's favor. They did get an offensive rebound, but they need to get the ball to the bigs. And I shortchanged her. That was her 12th rebound. Making a name for herself. I love to see these freshmen come into their own and make a name for themselves in this league. It's easy to do it when you're a freshman. It's tough your sophomore, junior, and senior year. When people know about you. Yep. Because you got to develop your game and make something different happen. You wish those broadcasters wouldn't talk about you so much. <laughs> exactly. All of your tendencies are not tendencies. Bit impressed with Her uh, Angela Harris, though. Both Harris's, but Angela Harris. You talk about having a veteran run your team. She has really done a good job of running their offense. She's the only Harris on the court right now. Again, a brand new ball game. As Branch tried to reestablish a three-point lead for Houston. Yeah, Maya West was over the back. Little, little touchy touch, but still callable. And Memphis will return home. They hope with a victory for a matchup this weekend. Houston will hit the road. Let's see if they can get the ball to the wing here. So far, they, they've had a hard time. They're still back up at the top. Jada Stenson trying to get the attention of her teammates. Elmore blocked that time. As getting the hand on it was Maya West, the six-foot junior. That was good defense on the ball. Creighton goes right at three Cougars, and she'll draw a whistle on one of them, uh, presumably on Barnes. And just like that, Memphis will enjoy the bonus for the final five-plus minutes. Well, Creighton has motor, and that, she, that her motor is always running. She's always going to do, you know, the ultimate thing for her team. She finishes well around the basket most of the time. 
He's two for two tonight from the charity strike. Now has 15 points. That matches Jazz Harris of Houston for the game high. Houston has been scoreless for the past two and a half minutes now. And it's allowed Memphis to take a two-point lead thanks to Creighton's free throws. Elmore with the rebound and a tie-up. And possession arrow keeps it right here. Well, there is a little inadvertent push right there. This is the only time they will meet in the regular season. Again, with the addition of Wichita State, 12-team league. Some teams will just see each other once. A little step aside, both teams will have a chance to cool off before the final. 4.51, Memphis up by two. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Miss the chance to see your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Mohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. Well, the Cougars again tr find themselves down by a pair, still in the hunt for one of those top seeds in the conference tournament. They'd love to get March 3rd off and make their debut in the second round on March 4th. Again, back in Connecticut this year for the conference tournament. All 12 teams will move on. The top four will get the opening day off. Don't have to wait till March, though, to start crowning champions again here in the American as we will be up in Dallas right here on the American Digital Network, have all four days of the swimming and diving championships in the American, then over to the Crossplex in Birmingham. Always a busy time of year over there for a variety of Division I conferences, including right here on ADN with the American Championships up for grabs. Then we'll step outside in April for golf and tennis. Wrap things up with softball, outdoor track and field, rowing and baseball over in Florida. But again, all of these championships will have coverage on the American Digital Network right here. And that includes next week. If you want a good Valentine's Day excuse, uh, join us in Dallas to take in the swimming championships. Well, the tail of the tail, tail of the... Sure. Whatever, yeah. You're is, in charge. Uh, is the rebounding here. 44 rebounds for Memphis to 24 rebounds for Houston. Even though Memphis has turned the ball over more, Houston always wants second chance points, always. You know, they're looking for second chance, and they're not getting that many second chances, so they have to hit that first chance that they have. Angela uh, Jasmine has been out, out, out of the game for a little bit, so we'll see if he puts her back in because obviously they need her right now. I've never known any tape to actually tell. <laughs> As again, both coaches right now talking things over with their players. Memphis up by a pair, outscoring Houston here in this fourth quarter, 11 to five. And again, when you looked at Memphis's schedule, forget the fact that they just have seven players, but when you have UConn and USF, UConn twice, front loaded on your schedule, you understand why you might have some struggles, even if you did have everybody healthy. But look, down the stretch, Memphis after today, SMU, ECU, Tulane, UCF, Tulsa, Temple. And those will be games that each and every night, if things click for them, as perhaps they can here tonight against Houston, one of the top teams, they can leave with a W. Exactly. If you could write it like that and it, it ends like that, that'd be perfect. There's your standings right now. Uh, UConn again, right? Two games better than both USF and UCF. Uh, but look, Houston, ECU, Wichita State, those three schools were picked to be bottom three in the league this year. Wichita State with new head coach Keith Adams and new to this conference has moved right to the middle of the pack. Cincinnati right there as well as Coach Elliott has them poised for a nice run. But uh, those top four seeds are the coveted ones. Get that extra day off and wh whomever you play on round two will have just played 24 hours 
Pryor. There's a bottleneck, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and uh, I, I just think Coach McFerrin just wants a win, you know. And when you're this close in a game where you can get what we, what most people consider an upset on, on one of the top four teams, you just you just want to get it done any way you can. And so I think her, I think her, her, her game plan has been perfect. Um, Houston's been kind of getting by a little bit. I think they've got more in their tank, and we'll see if they deliver. Officials have been looking over some things. Reason for a slightly longer than usual media timeout. Well, Memphis probably doesn't mind this, right? No. Another lengthy timeout. So my bet for, for Houston that uh, Jasmine Harris is going to come with, have a lot of fuel in her tank now. She's been sitting out a while, so I would be ready to guard her when she crosses half court. Yeah, she's been on the bench in terms of game minutes for a handful of minutes now, but you real time, uh, she should have some fresh legs underneath her. Uh, Harris again tonight. 5 of 12 shooting, all five of those from beyond the arc. Uh, for her 15 points this evening. 12 points for Angela Harris. And then for Memphis, your bright spots, three players in double figures, including the freshman Davis, who got the start tonight, 11 points, 12 rebounds. Uh, team high, 15 points for Creighton to go with eight boards. Elmore is a point and two rebounds shy of a double-double as well. And Stinson with 10 points this evening. Well, if they can get the ball to Creighton and Davis, that's what they want to do. The extension of Houston's half-court defense has caused that, them difficulty of getting it inside, and so they've been just firing up the three a little more than they should. But And then it's disrupting their half-court sets, with their, which they're really good at. May have a clock issue. Most recent thing that may need to be resolved. Have you ever been in one of those long huddles with one of your teams, uh, perhaps at Nebraska, and... You've already given them all the wisdom you can, and now all of a sudden you find out uh, you're supposed to put on a show in your huddle for another couple of minutes. Yeah, but I just keep talking. And they're like, shut up, coach. No. I mean, yeah, I've been in those extended ones. You actually enjoy them. Well, it's going to turn out to be, I believe, a flagrant. As uh, things that heated up, between these two teams, obviously a close ball game. And certainly Dorian Branch has been in the fold in some of these exchanges. There's a freshman who averaged about 12 to 15 minutes a year ago, now a sophomore, giving them almost 34 minutes a night. And in a game like this, those are some big free throws. 48 apiece now, we're even again. And possession for the Cougars. That's a tough call late in the game here. Not sure if we got caught that on camera. So I believe Elmore with that last foul had to been ruled a flagrant. And from the wing, that's a five point play for the Cougars. They're, they're going to review whether or not her foot was on the line. At the moment, they'll count it as a three to make it 51-48. But again, here in crunch time, they want to make sure they have it right so they won't delay a review. And it looked like both feet were, in fact, behind even the men's line. I say the men's line. It's all the same now. Yes. Yeah, she's, she's set. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a game changer. I mean, five-point turnaround. We'll see how they handle it. That interior line now just for high school basketball. Other way. And Elmore off the mark, one and done. Force them to qu hit a quick shot that they don't really want to take. And Cougars give it right back. It's only a three-point game, so it's important that Memphis keeps control of their offensive execution. Runs their sets here. How will this one finish? Tigers, you see the turnovers still in contention for a victory here on the road. It seems like they're taking too long to get their offense set. It's 14 seconds, and they just made their first pass. Creighton into Davis. The senior finds the freshman. What do I know? 
Great pass. Back within one, and a dagger from Harris, her sixth from downtown. We've seen it in other games. That's her sweet spot. That's where she loves to shoot. I think we've learned anybody with the name Harris is allowed to shoot from there. Jazz Harris, after that breather, now has 18 points tonight. And Jasmine will pick up her second personal foul. And again, it's the bonus the rest of the way for Memphis. Well, Jasmine's led him in scoring almost every game here in the last eight games, so you got to figure she's going to get her points. It's not a surprise. Memphis has trailed for less than nine minutes in tonight's ball game. As Barnes, the sophomore, connects with the first free throw, a 75% shooter this year. Barnes, another one of your Memphis natives. In fact, her high school coach is often a regular attendee at her home games. I've got a great idea. Guard Jasmine Harris. Well, I'm out of eligibility. Long three. You okay with that look? I'm okay with that look. Is that an H-Town heat check? I'm not okay. With, I mean, she was a little downtown on that shot, but I guess she has it in her repertoire. Is that a word? It is. Okay, good. They're patient. They miss Creighton in there. They got to get the ball to Creighton. She's open. It's taking them too long. Again, open in the corner, begging for the ball is Stinson. They find her. Nobody picks her up. And she just can't connect. Houston with numbers the other way, four on two. Oh, and they're fortunate there. Jazz Harris back to where it started with Angela. Need to find Creighton here. Again, the only way these two teams meet again this year would be in Connecticut in the conference tournament this March. It's been a nice battle here this evening. Mentioned if the Tigers were truly healthy, this would be two very similar squads. How about that effort underneath? Second chance points from Jada Stinson. Wow, that was impressive. And with two minutes to go, again, we are even. Impressive rebound, reverse. It's a long two, good for Angela Harris. She's a cool customer. And timeout by Melissa McFerrin. As her Tigers down by two, inside of two minutes to go. Definitely a contrasting styles. You've got Memphis controlling everything with sets on this side and then kind of the freelance style of dribble penetration and just shoot it at will from Houston and both effective but contrasting. Asked her about that loss at UCF this weekend and she identified that as the low point for this team that has lost now five straight. Said some of the players splintered from the Memphis game plan. Memphis with a chance now to bounce back Take a look at how you and I will be bouncing back as ADN will make trips to Philadelphia, Tampa, Cincinnati, over to Memphis and to Houston to wrap up the regular season coverage here on ADN. Get to see the Tigers that one final time on February 21st at home. Uh, next up, again, backyard of the new Super Bowl champions. Driving past three Cougars, but among them was Maya West with another swatted shot tonight. Has Jazz Harris made a three-pointer tonight? Um, yeah. That's number seven for Harris. And, and the Tigers total. throw it out of bounds. Well, I talked about the gears and I talked about, you know, the mentality, and Houston just they've got some gamers on their team. Melissa McFerrin telling some of her tired players, I just need another 67 seconds out of you. 
Need a stop here. Harris hit that three a moment ago to stretch the lead to five. Goes right at Davis and a look for the old-fashioned three. To the rim. That's what she does. She gets to the rim. She's been one of the best in the country this year. Well, she hasn't had to pull up too much because she has such speed and quickness and versatility that she can get to the rim pretty much at will. And she can turn it on. Looking to match those 24 points we saw from her this weekend. If she continues what she's doing, I mean, she's got to be a first-teamer in the American Conference. Uh, I like her mentality and her personality. With the growth of the now sophomore Jasmine Harris out of Freeport, Texas, uh, the Cougars continue to climb here in the American standings. Right now, eight-point lead. Well, Coach Hugh, he's a recruiter from many, many years of at tons of different programs, and we've talked a lot about that, but that's what that's his forte is recruiting. Uh, he's, he's learning to be a better coach. I think he's a good coach, but he's never been a head coach for that long, so that's not his forte. And so congratulations on the assemblance of what he's got. I think he's still missing a couple pieces inside. He, he needs to bolster his inside, but other than that, he's got some great players. With that said, as a recruiter, he takes it personally when he sees one slip away outside of Houston. He can tell you the name of every top Houston player who's now sitting on a bench somewhere uh, for another team. Yeah, he, he knows his areas. He knows his teams. He knows all his AAU coaches. I mean, there you go. I mean, that's a tough cross-court pass. Branch to three on one, one on none. And that may do it. It's our first double-digit separation between these two teams tonight. Well, it doesn't tell the story, unfortunately, for Memphis. I mean, I'm not supposed to feel bad, but I do feel bad because they put on a heartfelt performance here tonight. They, they played hard. It was a great game plan by Coach McFerrin. I mean, uh, amazing for them to have the heart to do what they just did. She has three players who have not come off the court tonight, Stinson, Elmore, and Creighton. They've combined for 36 points. I sure hope they don't hang their head after this one. I know they let it go here at the end, but uh, I've talked about Houston's ability to turn gears up, and Houston turned it up. Stinson will split the two free throws. As again, Memphis gets tonight just 11 minutes off of its bench from a pair of players, and now they're forced to foul. That will be the 15th foul, so finally... Uh, looking for the bonus to kick in. Yeah, Hawkins, I thought Hawkins did some good stuff inside. They need her to step up. And uh, obviously the Harrises did a great job. But um, as a team, they're just tough to beat when they're shooting like that from three. Folks, stick around. We'll hear from one of the top Cougar performers tonight, as well as Ron Huey. He, he rattled off all the nicknames, and I asked, what's your nickname? He said, Father Coog. Uh, worked in a few references here today. Uh, Coach Huey, what a turnaround it has been this year. An 11 point lead for Houston. who again still has only led for about 12 minutes of tonight's ball game, but it's all come here late. And well, if you talk about fatigue, perhaps a shorthanded group, uh, Memphis is tired of that talking point, but in reality, in an up-tempo game like this, Houston loves to press and try to wear you down. Uh, we may have seen some signs of that here near the end. Well, how about that timeout with 20 seconds to go? Coach McFerrin still coaching. I mean, the game's out of hand but she's still calling a timeout to run a play. So hats off to her. It's a tough year. She hasn't really had this. And uh, I do think her, her kids got a little tired early, which worried me, but I, I felt they stayed right with it. Uh, they did turn the ball over too much, but I think uh, I have to credit the defense more than, than them. You know, they, the defense just, when they turned it on, it was just tough to find the open man. Again, her senior Creighton gave her 15 points tonight. 
played all 40 minutes at eight rebounds as well. Got another 13 points from both Davis and Stinson. Davis with a double-double added 11 rebounds. Tigers just trying to make this a single-digit deficit. We'll never get a shot off. And let's see if the Cougars can dribble out or if the Tigers will continue to foul. And it appears that will do it. Houston will remain just three losses in conference play. Eight and three will keep them in that hunt for the number two seed in the American. And for the Cougars, for the first time under Coach Huey, four straight wins in conference. It's the first time the Cougars have done that since 2011. They went to the NCAA tournament that year. Looking for postseason play before it's all said and done. When we're back, we'll talk to Father Coop. In a city known for doing things our way, there's a university that's driven to do the same to blur the outdated line between academic pursuits and active ones. Not just to learn, but to experience. To create, solve, build. To explore and express. To lead. Because an education isn't something you get. It's something you do. thousand student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a power six conference known as the American Cougars enjoying a victory in conference for the fourth straight outing and for the seventh time through ten games here in the American. I make it eighth time now as uh, Houston, one of the headliners this year in the American in terms of turnarounds and impressive showing here so far in 2018. The Cougars up next will travel up to Tulsa before they're back here against ECU. Well, Jazz Harris, phenomenal down the stretch. Seven three-pointers, and she is our top player tonight. She is with Megan. Jasmine, 20 points for you tonight. What sets you off and made you come alive? You know, just my teammates having confidence in me, and then I was just had confidence in myself and just shoot the ball. And you guys are kind of stepchildren in this arena, but you've only lost two games. Where have y'all found the chemistry in this arena? You know, we just... It's just a regular court to us, you know. It don't matter where we play, we always gonna play hard. So. Do you find it see a difference in last year's team and this year's team? Oh yes, the chemistry is much better, and you know we just play together as a whole way uh, better, and we know we all get along with each other. Awesome! Well, congratulations. Enjoy the win. Thank you. Thank you. Coach, in the third, you guys tied it, and we saw that bench come off and everybody come on the court. What's different about this team this year? You know, it's the energy and the effort that they have between each other. I think it's the overall, I care for my teammate, I love my teammate, I want to be around my teammate. It's that family. That's why at every huddle, we say one, two, three, family. And you've talked about trying to find that leadership in your team, and tonight you saw a lot of players step up. Did you see a little more of that leadership? We, it, it got a little crazy in the first half, especially with all the little chippiness. And we, we tried to keep our kids into young adults instead of little girls. And that's where the leadership started to step up and they start to say among each other, this is not us, this is not how we act, let's not do that. And so that was one of those moments where we talked about we have some leadership moments start to step up. And I think that was one of the things that propelled us to win this game. Well, congratulations on a great win, Coach. Enjoy it. Thank you so much. And go Cougs! 
Well, Ron Huey has his Cougars now one win away from a 20-win season. The bar has been raised in Houston. It's all about positioning themselves for postseason play here in 2018. Now eight and three in the American. For our entire ADN crew, Megan Trammell and Angela Beck, I'm Lincoln Rose. Cougars take this one, their lone regular season meeting with Memphis, 66 to 55.